I went to Warsaw for work in 2019, where I met a girl and we kicked some stuff off. After ending up in my rented apartment and going to sleep, I woke up around 2.30am to find her packing her stuff, which was on a chair in the bedroom. She walked to the door and I started asking her, where are you going? Thinking it wouldn't be a nice move to just try to walk out in the middle of the night. I couldn't see much detail since it was dark in the room, just the black silhouette of a girl. She then walked to the door, but stopped and turned toward me, it seemed, and proceeded to just stare. I started calling her name, thinking she's sleepwalking, until I heard her in my right ear. Looking over, she was still next to me in bed, slowly waking up. I looked back at the girl I saw, and she was still there. I freaked, lunged to the lamp on the bedside table, turned it on, and she was gone. I've been told about sleep paralysis, but the thing was I could sit up, move, and think clearly. Now, fast forward to the start of 2020. I was back home in Elmia, a city close to Amsterdam. Ever since I moved into my new place, I hear footsteps around the house. Once while on a video call with colleagues in my office on the first floor, right across from the staircase, I could hear someone or something bolting up the stairs, straight through my headphones. After half a year, it didn't bother me anymore until two weeks ago. When my current girlfriend was here, not the girl from Warsaw, I had the same experiences that I had in Warsaw. This time, however, I thought more clearly and grabbed my phone. I turned on the flash and aimed at the figure. When pointing at it, it was gone. I then moved the flash away and could see it again. This really boggled my mind. The figure then seemed to bow down, I believe, but proceeded to go downwards until it just disappeared into the floor. Every now and then I find chairs moved, wake up to the sound of my office chair rolling and still hear footsteps. A small town in the mountains known for being built on the idea of riches from mining has had its fair share of different personalities. Some of these souls had moved on and others had gotten lost. This town had many mining structures and oxidised mountains of minerals all abandoned. But one name sticks out to me, my friends, and a good amount of others in the town. One mine we call Sarko. This mine is a good 20 minute drive past other abandoned structures and up into the mountains. You get to a main gate that veers off into a dirt road. This takes you to an old tailings pond. A huge field elevated above the ground to hold water when there is a lot of excess water. Across the field are multiple abandoned structures that sit lonely. Right next to the inlet of the water. Me and my friend have never been out there, but we always heard of it. We ventured out to see it and also looked for paranormal experiences. As we drive in, There's a herd of deer watching our every move as we get ready to sneak our way over. We started walking down a hill that then had us jump over a river. Then a steep hill to get into the flat field that once was a tailings pond. We get to the top and right away notice that the moon is lighting up a lot of our surroundings. We could see a shadow casted of the mountain behind the buildings. So in other words, a dark side and a bright side. The walk was two football fields away from the start of the field. As we walked over, we watched the floor to watch our step. We walked what felt like 50 yards when my friend told me, hold up, we're already here. This spooked us out because it felt like we had teleported right to the base in a matter of a few steps. It was as if once we stepped into the shadow, the distance of walking was extremely tampered and felt unreal. We were looking to communicate with spirits and would hear taps on the building that would be a response to our questions. After that, we weren't experiencing too much paranormal activity, so we decided to leave. As we were walking out back to the steep and long slope, I started to hear an extra footstep behind us, almost as if we were being followed out or even escorted. I told my friend and he heard it too. In my mind, I wanted to debunk it and see if it was all imagination, so I stopped on a dot 
and made sure right behind us one extra footstep as soon as I stopped. We looked at each other in shock and I told my friend let's stay calm and just walk out normally. Once we started climbing down the steep hill, it felt as if the presence of something had just left us. And as we were leaving in the car, the same deer heard what just drive out. And a little farther down, one deer jumped in front of the car like one last go away from the spirits. I had an uneasy feeling after my parents left me in my dorm room this past September. The first few weeks were uneventful, no trouble sleeping. A detail that's important to this story is my room decorations. I brought two tiny strings of mini Himalayan salt rocks to hang in my room. One was wrapped around my rear and the other on my bookshelf. One night, I woke up at around 4am, rolled over to the side that faced my room. I noticed the Himalayan salt rock lights around my mirror glowing. The light flickered a few times before going out. I got out of bed, flipped on the lights and inspected the battery compartment. Sure enough, they were switched off. It was weird. I decided to take the batteries out and deal with it in the morning. I managed to fall asleep. Unfortunately, I had one of the scariest, most vivid dreams. In the dream, I woke up and saw the lights hanging on my bookshelf flickering. I remember getting out of bed and going to turn off the lights, but froze when I heard a voice from behind me. I don't remember exactly what was said, but it was like, oh no, not again. I woke up and was completely terrified. I raced to turn on the lights and refused to go back to sleep for the rest of the night. I kept glancing over at the mirror because I've heard mirrors can act as portals. I covered the mirror with a blanket, which made me feel a little less uneasy. It gets weirder. At about 5am, I decided to text my boyfriend. Strangely, he texted me about 15 minutes later. It was weird that he was up at this hour, especially since he was up late the night before on the phone with me. I FaceTimed him to explain exactly what happened. After my story, I asked him why he was up so early. He said he had had a scary dream and all he remembers from it is being upset and crying. He told me he had this uneasy feeling and an urge to check his phone. That's when he saw my text and texted me back. Maybe it's nothing. Maybe it was just a dream. I'm home for winter break now. I'm thankful to get a break from that room and not be afraid to fall asleep. I've always believed in aliens, despite never encountering any myself, until one night in July. These strange occurrences happened about two to three years ago in the southeast region of New Hampshire. I still can't explain what I saw and neither can my mother. My mother and I got off work and drove down this back road. We were about five to seven minutes away from our house. I'm driving. We were approaching a hill that leads up to a long narrow road through the woods. I see a bright light hovering about 20 feet above the house, perched on top of the hill. My mother notices it too. I turn off the radio and roll down the windows. No noise. I drove up the hill and noticed two cars stopped off on the side, looking up at the sky. I pass them and take a glimpse through the trees. I see a large square shaped metal object. There are circular lights shining from the bottom. My mum and I turned around in the first driveway we could find. 30 seconds, maybe less. We went back and it was gone. I was freaked out, but excited to have a UFO story of my own. The excitement gradually wore off the more frequently the sightings became. My friend and I were walking along the beach across from my family's restaurant. We saw a light hovering near the lighthouse. We assumed the light had stopped revolving since it wasn't moving. Suddenly, the light jolted forward and began flying around manically. It drove behind the houses along the beach and disappeared. At this point, I've had another person in my life experience separate events. I know it wasn't just a figment of my mom's imagination. My mother and I saw it about once a week for the next month after that. 
the light would be hovering in the distance, completely silent, and would disappear once we were too close. We chose to ignore it. As long as the light kept its distance, we felt moderately safe. Then came the close encounter. My mum and I got off work around 8 and returned home with a trunk of groceries. Our condo is at the very end of a cul-de-sac. And at the other end, a tiny hill with a line of tall trees. As we're bringing bags into the house, I notice a light off in the distance. The light starts getting closer and closer until it's above the tree line, which is about 100 feet, give or take, from where our car is and stops. My mum is frightened at this point. I tell her I'm done being afraid and stand there, waiting for the light to approach me. As I begin walking towards it, it zooms off to my left and disappears above the forest tree line. I was shaken. The light had stopped and seemed to be observing my mother and I until we took notice. Since that summer, we've never seen it again except for one other time, but we chalked it up to a drone. We've tried to explain it. Helicopters, but there was no noise. Planes, stopped moving randomly. Even drones, still didn't explain the uneasy silence, etc. We began to think it was trying to abduct us, or maybe it already had, and we had no memory of it. So I'd like to share something that happened to me when I was about 9 or 10 years old. I'm 26 now. So to set the context, I was back in England living with my family, in an old Victorian house with my sisters and mum. Just us girls. I loved the house. I never felt spooked or whatever in it. One night, I was in bed ready to sleep. And all of a sudden, my bed cover went perfectly neat and flat. Like no bumps, creases or whatsoever. And then loads of symbols started to appear fast. I can vaguely recall what they were. It's really hard to explain. When I try to rethink it, I get all uncomfortable and kind of feel sick if I concentrate on what I saw too much. So then it all stopped suddenly and I felt a weight at my feet as if someone was sitting down on my bed with me. So I was petrified and not moving, as if I was stuck, not able to shout. I then found myself surrounded by a bright light and I had all these people leaning over me. The way I explain it is, you know when you're getting ready for an operation and that you are in the operating room and that everyone is waiting for you to fall asleep to start the actual operation? They're all there, looking down at you. Exactly that. Well, this was too much for me. And I leapt from my bed and jumped down the stairs, four by four. Ran from the house screaming, they're going to hurt me. My mum grabbed me before I got on the road and I can't remember what happened after that. I was talking about this with her yesterday and she actually told me that this went on for two or three nights before stopping. My house has had portal problems for as long as I can remember. We don't have a haunting per se since we believe it's a vortex of some sort of spirits and entities to cross through so they come and go but most stay a while before leaving, if they ever do. There's a cemetery up the street that I frequent often, and we speculate a possible connection between the two. I decided to compile a select few stories from over the years, in case it may interest someone, because it sure as hell interests me. My chest was getting very tight just typing this out. I'm aware I overexplained things, but I think I'd rather provide more information than needed than less. Background. My siblings, 27 male and 24 female, and I, 18 female, were raised in the same house since birth. My brother has since moved out twice, while my sister and I remain at home with our parents. We're all pretty intuitive and sensitive when it comes to energies, particularly my sister and I. Ever since we were all young, we individually decided that there is some sort of portal in our basement, which is now referred to exclusively as the hole. The hole resides in an unfurnished part of the basement, which was used for storage for the first 22-ish years of my parents owning it. It's an odd indent built into the wall that goes from floor to ceiling floorboard, just wide enough for a person to stand in 
behind where the wall would be if it were built straight. It's in the far corner of the room, the only one not visible from the door. When it was in storage, the room connected at the opposite corner from the hole to our laundry room, like the corners of the room overlapped and formed a high doorway between them. Whenever I was young for as far back as I can remember, I was petrified to go into the room whenever my mom asked me to get her something, or even to go into the laundry room without quickly switching on the lights in the storage before running from the door as fast as possible, which was still extremely nerve-wracking for little me. On the occasions I didn't turn on the light, I could feel something watching me intently from the opposite corner. Twice I saw what I think were glowing eyes in the dark. Around the same time as the aforementioned was occurring, I was having repetitive nightmares for years, until I was probably 9 or 10 I believe. It was the exact same up to a point. I was being hunted by a man with a half a face through an abandoned hospital. The only difference every night was that when he'd inevitably catch me, he would torture me to death in a new way, seemingly more sadistically each time than the last. I'd wake up just as I began to feel what I'm pretty sure was my life fading away. It felt so real, so painful. I'd wake up with marks occasionally that correspond to what had happened in the nightmare the night before. Take note, this was when I was five and possibly younger, to tenish, and my mother was careful to shelter me from violent media or concepts when I was young, so these ideas should not have been imaginable for me at the time. When I finally worked up the courage to tell my mum about my nightmares, she prayed over me and blessed me with holy water. Catholic moms, man. And within a week, her continuing to pray for it to stop, they suddenly disappeared. And I noticed the entity that was making me so petrified of downstairs was either gone or not showing itself. We came to the conclusion later that whatever it was had attached itself to me and was feeding off my fear of it through influencing my dreams. She thinks it was a demon, but I'm not sure of that. Small things happened over the years, but from the time I was around 10 to 13, it was nothing remarkable. When I was 13, my brother and his girlfriend moved in after she got pregnant in order to be able to provide the best for their child. We converted the storage room into an apartment for them. He finished off a small square of the laundry room to be my niece's room for the time so the two rooms are no longer openly connected. We had barely ever entered the room in years, but it still had a very heavy feeling after so much time. While moving stuff around, activity like things going missing and popping back up, and electronics turning off and on, began to start up. Whoever was there at the time, they didn't like being disturbed very much. After my brother and near sister-in-law got settled in, it died back down, partially because they felt the hole was too ominous and covered it with particle board that remains there to this day, but stayed active enough to let us know something was still there. It would turn on flashlights that had debt batteries in them for the year before or require a hard push on, a button, and turn them off when you go to grab them, set off my niece's electronic toys in the middle of the night, knock on walls, whisper, etc., we just learned to get used to it after a while of being in the room often. This past summer, my brother's family moved into their own place and I moved into the apartment to escape my traumatic old room upstairs, which is a whole different issue itself. Of course, as they began packing stuff up, the activity got more noticeable again, as well as when I was moving my stuff in. I've been here since about July and I think I've experienced more activity in the room in the past four to five months than all of it in my life before combined. I began not only hearing them and seeing their influence on electronics more and more, but sometimes seeing figures and seeing them interact with non-electronic objects, like opening and closing the doors in the basement when nobody's looking. In the beginning, the first I saw was when I rolled over at night and glanced toward the foot of the bed, towards the hole, where I saw the silhouette of someone's shoulders up for a split second. It didn't make me feel scared, just unsettled me for a moment, as anyone would if they saw someone in their room at night. The entities listen when you talk about them in the house. We can tell. So I talked to my sister about it the next day, 
and said something along the lines of, it's kind of rude of me not to have my couch in the room yet. He could have sat on the corner of the bed if he wanted. Well, the next night, I came back from the bathroom and opened my door to the dim light of my wax melter. And I swear up and down that I saw the dark figure sitting on the corner of my bed before flipping on the light after a split second. Obviously, there was no figure when the light turned on, but there was an impression of a butt on my bed sheets, as if someone had just been there. This confirmed they definitely listened to what we say in the house at least, but seemed to be more responsive when not being talked to directly. So it's easiest to just talk about it with my sister, to influence their behavior. Every once in a while, I'll feel a new presence appear. One of the most noteworthy newcomers was a real dick to start. In the beginning of it, I'd feel a massive feeling of dread that someone was standing right behind the door to my room, about six feet tall. After a few times of just standing, he'd switch to walking down the stairs that are right by my room, but only the bottom six stairs, and then proceeded to stand at my door for minutes. This mostly happened at night, and when I told my family about it, my mom took me out of the house to tell me she heard it too, and I'm not crazy. She thought it was me going downstairs, but she waited to hear my door open and close, but she never did, because who she heard wasn't me. I think the worst time he got me was the last time he tried to mess with me. It was just about noon. I was watching TV in my room while home alone, when I heard the sound of someone walking down the bottom half of the stairs. He stood at my door for a minute without making a sound before starting to slowly jiggle my door handle. I thought I was going to have a panic attack because the only exit had an unknown entity on the other side of the door. And I sat frozen for at least 15 minutes just watching my handle jiggle until it stopped when my dad came home. For some reason, the fact that it was the middle of the day made it feel even more threatening. I got really fed up at this point and started ranting loudly to my sister how he's all talk and isn't going to do shit. How he just wants to intimidate me and needs to learn his place in this household. I honestly expected a little backlash, but he only walked down the stairs one more time that night before stopping and it hasn't happened since. Most recently, a couple weeks ago, my mom decided to try to pry away the portal for no reason. They caused no harm or annoyance in a long time and I honestly enjoy their company. I've never wanted to banish any entities or their means of transportation if they haven't done anything harmful. Since she made that prayer, they've been very upset with my mom and more shy around me compared to before. The day or two after she prayed, I was near the top of the stairs making pizza rolls when my mom went downstairs to do laundry, singing on the way. She was halfway down the stairs, my bedroom door that I had left open, slammed, closed. The door swings open rather than closed, and it was done with force. They wanted to make sure she knows they're upset with her. The next thing, she was taking a bath when the towel hanging behind her head fell in the water. She said in all the years of living here, that hasn't happened to her, but didn't think much of it until she went to reach for the towel on the floor and saw the hand towel across the room be pulled to the floor. To say the least, she wasn't pleased with being bothered during bath time. Since she decided to make this prayer, I've noticed they will not be active while I'm in the room anymore. But practically, as soon as I step foot out of it, there's tons of movement and sounds starting up. I'll come back and my door will be open when I leave it closed or vice versa. And sometimes, things will even be moved slightly before I return to the room. I'm not sure why they're feeling the need to be so much more active when there aren't direct witnesses at the moment. And don't get the feeling they're mad at me. They're just upset that someone tried to close their portal that's probably significant to them. I tried my best to coexist with them peacefully and be kind and kind of feels like she ruined the bond. Which I know sounds insane, but it's a weird situation I'm in and I've learned to accept. I care for them and their well-being, regardless of if they're a physical person or not. And she offended my guests. So about 10 years ago in 2011, I moved out of my family's house into my first apartment. This is in a small town of Colorado, 
with its only real claim to fame being a big hole in the ground. I moved in with a buddy of mine who I knew in high school and all was well for a while. My friend needed to move out of state, leaving me to a cycle of replacements to cover his part of bills. The last roommate I had, I had almost no contact with, but he managed the money and mostly kept it in his room at the back of our place. Eventually, one day I get a knock on the door. Police with a warrant step inside to his room, cuff him and leave. I still don't know what it was about, but I haven't heard from him since. The police interaction was the last straw for my landlord and received a three-day court mandated eviction. While cleaning his room, I removed mostly trash, a toolbox that was mainly screwdrivers, and what seems like a sketchbook or journal that he might have bound himself. Until recently, when I found it at the top of a closet, I was expanding. I had completely forgotten about it. I have no idea how it made it through the cleaning and subsequent moves over the last decade. I can think of at least three places I lived, not to mention couch hopping, yet somehow this book made it through. I'm not sure where to start researching this thing, but the pen work is so detailed and painstaking. I felt it must be something of note. The book itself is mainly blank, but has some writing, English, backward, other stuff that looks hieroglyphic. Whatever help will be appreciated. This story happened to me about 12 years ago. I was around 24 at the time. I worked hospitality, so it'd be later at night when my friends and I hung out. So, at around 9 o'clock, my friend and I decided to go for a drive, someplace we've never been. Just get in the car and go. I offered and wanted to drive because my mother was out of town and I was using her Mercedes. It was one of those early 90s e-bodies, the ones that were big piles of heavy steel, a real tank of a car. I only mention the car body because it becomes relevant later in the story. He happily agreed and we hit the road. We lived near, near Milwaukee, Wisconsin at the time. Good old Wisconsin where well, you get a lot of really good stories out of, I've noticed. Seems to be a pretty paranormal state. Either way, we drive north out of the city and drive for about an hour, when I see an exit I don't recognise and decided to get off there. There was nothing at this exit other than cornfields, no gas station or restaurant signs, no visible light of a town in any direction. So we were in a place we don't recognise, but that was the point just driving to get nowhere because the speed limit was 35 and we were in no rush. The moon was out enough that everything was pretty visible. About a mile into the cornfields, we could see two kids on the right side of the road. We comment on how weird it is because there's no housing or stores or even lights on the horizon. Plus, it was 10.30ish at night. Naturally, there were two larger guys, so we didn't worry about anything so I slowed down so we could inquire if their car broke down or if they were okay. As we pulled up, I noticed the kid in front clothing. It was a stained cream colored tweed type shirt with real tattered sleeves and overalls with only one strap. He appeared to be maybe 12 years old. The second kid was taller, wearing a red flannel type shirt with old times looking khaki pants. However, I could barely notice the court taller kid standing further behind the smaller one, because as I pulled up noticing the clothes, I got to see the whole child fully, and his arms were to the side, slightly raised, almost in that iconic zombie way. But his eyes, I couldn't take my eyes off of him, and I did my best to mutter to my friend, you're seeing this too, right? His eyes were pitch black, blacker than the night, but easy to see as he stood there staring at us. I didn't know what the heck I was seeing, but I've never been so frightened in my life, and I've had several odd experiences that have left me unable to deny that there is more in this world than what we understand. So we stopped for a moment, locking eyes with whatever this thing was. It was no child. It was evil. I have zero doubts about that. We quickly agreed to go, and fast. We're not going to inquire with them. This was straight out of the twilight zone. And I remembered the hitchhiker, and that was not happening tonight, no sir. 
So we go and we clamor between ourselves. What the did we just see? What was that? What the hell was that? Still no signs of homes, just open cornfields. How these two kids be, could be there, I don't know. But I believe those were not kids. So I keep driving. And we get out of the fields onto a wooded, windy road. Shortly after probably around five minutes. Here in Wisconsin, there are random historical markers displaying information in whatever year has happened. I only mention that because I passed on the curve, so I glanced at that. As I'm driving through a curve going about 45 miles an hour, a creature walks in front of my car, my mum's car. As I saw it, it was nothing like I had ever seen. Its spine was tall, it stuck above the hood ornament as I hit it. It was a grey colour and looked like nothing I've ever seen. It had a very tall arch in its spine, almost like when a cat hisses and goes on its toes. That kind of shape, but in a very tall, gangly creature. I hit this thing straight on with the tank of a Benz. My friend is freaked out at this point, as am I to say the least. I stopped immediately, but now we're both a bit scared of the children of the corn. And now, this thing is literally within minutes of one another. We decide getting out is not going to happen, but I decide to stay in the locked car, but use the car in its lights to see what we hit, and make sure whatever the hell it was is dead, and I needed to know what I just saw. I drive in tiny circles, backing up and forwards, looking for this creature, but after checking every inch within 100 yards and not seeing anything, including not a drop of blood where I hit it, straight on with a bends, making contact with its spine, body, and head anywhere. This was unnerving, and although I wanted to check my mother's car, that would be dealt with further down the road. We were not going to get out there, so we decided to head home at this point. 15 minutes later, I got back to the freeway, and I needed to get out and see how bad the car was. As I got out to check, quickly, as I was not taking any chances tonight, I noticed my grill was busted in, but nothing too bad. So I made sure it was secure and got back in as quickly as possible. My friend decided to stay inside the car. Recently, I heard of the black eyed kids and freaked out a little bit. I didn't know what they were a real thing. I thought I just saw a couple demon kids or damned ghosts or I didn't know what to think. To this day, I've looked through tons of photos of supposed cryptid beasts and mythological creatures looking for what I hit, and the closest I've found is some Algonquin drawings of Wendigos, and they were very close to what I believe I saw and hit that night. It seems to me very odd both things could happen so close to one another, to not be related. Possibly it was an evil area, or possibly a ley line, I don't know. I would like to point out, I've lived in Wisconsin a long time, and it was not a deer or a coyote or anything else. What I hit was nothing native to the known Wisconsin landscape, and neither were those horrid kids. I'll never forget either of those faces and just hope I never come across them ever again. So my friend and I were driving around, just going wherever. Earlier in the car, she mentioned that it would be fun to watch a movie at a graveyard sometime. Now, hours had passed and the sun had set. She didn't have to be home for a bit, so I asked if we should check out a graveyard nearby. The graveyard was closed, but you could get your car up a little hill and walk around the gate. So we're checking this place out and it's relatively small. No mausoleums or anything, just graves. I started to read the names on the graves to maybe pay my respects a bit. And I find this group of graves, all with the same last name, so probably a family. These guys were born in the 1800s, so I was excited. And then, I found a guy with the same birthday as me. His death date was in February, but I don't remember the day. I wish I did. So fast forward, we get cold and decide to head back home. We get in the car, and my steering wheel is so hard to move. I assume it was because we were in a grassy and muddy area and I started to slowly back down the hill. The graveyard was directly off a busy road, speed limit around 45, but it was late and there weren't many cars out, so I assumed I'd be able to back out and head on my way. Spoilers. Nope. 
I get down the hill and I'm trying to turn and go forward, but I'm realizing that the gas isn't working and I'm in the middle of a lane. I push on my brakes, which are really hard to push on, and stop my car. I'm turning the key and there's no sound. I'm starting to freak the fuck out now. The road is two lanes, so people are passing me and I have my hazards on, but I don't know what's going on. P.S. I'm a newer driver and I don't know squat about cars. Eventually, some guys come around and ask if everything's okay, to which I reply, no, do you guys know about cars? They did and told me the battery was dead. Looking back, if my battery was dead, the car would sputter, but I was panicking and it sounded plausible. So they helped me get my car out of the lane and off the side of the road. I called my dad at this point and he tells me to take the key out, let everything turn off and start the car again. I do so and it works like a charm. So I drove home and immediately took my dog and went upstairs. He, my dog, is freaking out for some reason. I hop into bed and he jumps up with me, but the hair on his back is sticking up. He then proceeded to get up and lay down a bunch, tail between his legs. I calmed him down. I've been informed that my car was not working because I forgot to turn on the engine, but I've never only turned on the battery before. And I distinctly remember turning the key while on the road. Maybe it's all a coincidence. I'm kind of hoping it is, but I'm still a little spooked. When I was between 8 to 12 years old, I grew up in a very haunted house. I believe that there were many spirits there and I got a glimpse of one who I always believed to be demonic. The best way I could describe its appearance was that it looked like the mummy from the movie The Mummy, but it had huge white eyeballs with small pupils. I started experimenting with using crystals. I would wear them around my neck for protection. I wore rose quartz, amethyst and black onyx. Not at the same time, but separately. I was very careful about where I purchased them and I made sure to cleanse them. I never wore them to bed, but the one time I did, I regretted it. I fell asleep wearing my black onyx. Around 3 a.m. I'm jolted awake because I had a bad dream. I looked at the side of my bed and I saw the same demon looking creature standing beside me, hovering over me, smiling with a face that looked pure evil. I started freaking out and screaming and it woke my boyfriend up. When my boyfriend woke up, it was gone. I got out of bed and shut off the light. A few weeks later, I saw a shadow person pacing back and forth at the foot of my bed. Then I saw and heard a shadow person walking down the stairs after I caught them staring at me. My amethyst crystal completely disappeared without a trace, but I got rid of my black onyx and haven't experienced any activity since. I still have my rose quartz and I've had no problems with it. I would also like to mention that when I was younger, when I saw this thing for the first time, I lived in Southern Pennsylvania. Now I live in Western New York. So I think that thing may have followed me, but I don't know why I'm seeing it again for the first time over 10 years later. The unit I'm currently working on seems to have the most activity from my own personal experience. I've worked on all of the units, but on this one, I've seen the most. Almost every single day, I see shadow people. I catch glimpses out of the corner of my eye, or I just see a shadowy figure straight on. I work evening and night shifts. Strangely, I've experienced more on the evening shift. The unit I work on is also the COVID unit, so that might partly why it's more active. The COVID wing consists of two very long halls that meet together at a double door that leads to a kitchen area where there is also another residential room. Kind of weird setup, but hey, it works. My coworker was behind the double doors one night, taking care of one of the sick residents. But she had gone out of the kitchen area to take off her PPE. She saw and heard two children running around playing, but it was late at night and we weren't allowed to have inside visits. Turns out, Everybody at work says if someone sees the two children, then that means someone is going to die. And it's true. We have a chapel in the nursing home for the residents, but it's behind two sets of double doors 
and the residents can't get in there on their own due to codes and locks. There is a set of stairs behind the first set of doors, and everybody has repeatedly seen a bald guy sitting in the chapel late at night through the window of the hall, looking into the chapel. We had a resident who used to be a child molester. One night, he woke up in hysterics and crying, absolutely unconsolable. He said there were children surrounding him, standing by his bed and laughing at him. He died the next day. I went into a resident's room late one night during rounds at around 3 a.m. I was working on the dementia slash wonder risk unit. I'm standing next to the resident's bed and she asks, who's that man standing behind the curtain? I didn't think much of it because she did usually hallucinate, but within an hour, two residents from different units passed away. And the resident I was with, roommate fell out of bed and got hurt really bad. Liked turning off by themselves consistently late at night when everyone was in bed. What are your scary haunted nursing home stories? About a week and a half ago, me, my manager and another colleague of mine were driving around at 1am to try and find somewhere where we could get some food at a drive through Every 24 hour McDonald's appeared to be closed, so we ended up driving 30 minutes away to try and find somewhere that was open. Eventually, we gave up and pulled up at a service station around 2am. It was here really quiet, and we weren't even sure if it was open due to COVID, but we got out to check anyway. We walked into the doors, and it was mostly shut apart from toilets in a small shop, with one lonely worker sat behind a till. All the fast food places were shut, lights off. We used the toilet, and my manager recalled that she'd actually been here before. And there was another part of the service station across a bridge that could be open. So we went off to search for it. We found the walkway connecting to the bridge up two flights of stairs. The bridge was covered with windows surrounding the outside, showing a view of the motorway beneath. My manager said that the bridge was giving her the creeps, and I had to agree. It was long and narrow and dimly lit, with nobody else around. We decided to run as fast as we could to the other side. Honestly, it was unsettling. We made our way down the stairs at the end and were met with dead silence. Once again, we were faced with closed restaurants and dim lighting. There wasn't a single other person around and we were walking aimlessly around a large unoccupied space. A feeling of unease settled in. We couldn't take much more of the creepiness so we ran back up the stairs. Back across the bridge as fast as we could possibly manage. We caught our breath once we were back to the other side and commented on how strange the area had been. After that, we got snacks from the single open shop and walked back to the car to have a smoke. But the odd chilling feeling remained with us. We all agreed that we felt as though a lot of time had passed, despite the whole thing taking around 20 minutes only. The car park was empty and the air felt off, like the pressure had shifted. That's the best way I can describe it. We went home after that and tried to sleep it off, but when we woke up, things still weren't the same. Since then, the world has felt off to all of us. Colours look different, nothing feels normal or right. Things are the same and yet completely different. It's hard to describe. Life just feels more like a dream, and we all have a sense of being there in our day-to-day life, but not being present. We struggle to connect our minds to our physical bodies and be present in the moment. It sounds crazy, but it's been a very real experience for all three of us. We all agreed that this started when we left the service station that night. Then, a really weird thing happened tonight. So far, Google has nothing for me. Anyway, tonight we were dealing with some pretty morbid stuff with a friend of ours that's suffering with her mental health badly. We left her with the police and my manager and my colleague and I set off driving home. We discussed that night at the service station again. Noting that all the bad things that were happening with our friend and her mental health started after that. Other unpleasant events had followed as well, and we pondered the significance of our creepy adventure and the bad things that were happening now. I said, it's like since that night, nothing has been the same. And then the weird thing happened. We both started crying simultaneously, 
as if someone had turned a tap on for both of us. Water started leaking out of our eyes at exactly the same time, and we were so freaked. I felt a wave of sadness and emotion, but it wasn't enough to make me cry, and my colleague never cries. Ever. We're sure now more than ever that something happened that night. We just don't know what. We've joked about ending up in another dimension, and I don't normally believe anything like that. But this has me questioning because I'm honestly convinced that something isn't right. That we've encountered something that's changed all three of us. We just don't know what. Even as I write this, I feel off and a tad fearful. I have no idea why. I've been thinking of putting this here for a while, but I've been delaying organizing all the events on paper. There's a lot. I keep remembering more and more every time I pass over this with a pen. So I'm sorry if it's grown into a huge post by the time it sees the light of day, so to speak. Basically, throughout my life, there's been a figure, or a few, following me from house to house, sleepover to sleepover, even appearing at work and school sometimes. I know what you're thinking. I promise I'm not crazy. It would be impossible for other people to react to these events too, if they were all in my head. And though I try to be as investigative and rational as I can whenever something strange happens around me, check the windows, doors, box, check for intruders, etc. There is still a huge number of instances that I have no answers for, nor does my family. The earliest memories I have of the ghosts was a child. When my mother remarried, we moved in with him and his two children, younger than me, both of whom have experienced things too. It was a small two bed slash one bath. Outside of the room where my step siblings and I slept was a small corridor which basically was only big enough so that when you entered it, leaving the kitchen, the bathroom was on the left and the bedroom was on the right. That's it. And that's the spot I first remember seeing a man who would stand just outside the bedroom door every night. He was at least six feet tall, boots on with filthy pants that wrinkled loosely about his legs. I never saw what he was wearing up top, but I did get the impression he had great big eyes. I was too afraid to look at him directly. I still don't like to think about that face. We'd have the door cracked a bit for the kitchen light to come in at night, and he'd suddenly appear and block out that light. He'd just stand there, looking at us through the door. We'd call out to our parents, but there was never anything there to show them by the time they arrived from the master bedroom on the other side of the house. This and the typical shadow people stuff like leaning into doorways as well as items disappearing carried on for the next few years that we lived there. Whenever my cousins would come over for a sleepover, they would become nervous upon entering the house, as if they knew something was wrong. They started showing me pictures on their new camera phones, remember when we called them that, of orbs. I told them it was dust. They'd sometimes ask me if anyone else was home because they could hear voices coming from the next room. By then, I knew we had something paranormal going on, for certain, but I didn't believe them at first because how could they have experienced something new before me at my own house? Well, soon after, I started hearing my mother call me into the rooms that turned out to be empty. Voices, check. I started to think I was losing my mind at just seven years old. We were also starting to spot people walking around in rooms if the door was slightly cracked. People, as in new figures, not just the man from the doorway. People walking in circles, aimlessly or waving their arms around. Why are ghosts always doing the strangest things? I once saw a woman with blonde hair in a red dress with large white polka dots leap into my parents' bedroom from the living room where I was watching TV. She didn't approach the door. I didn't see her beforehand. She just appeared mid-stride and just sailed into the next room and disappeared. I just saw the tail end of her dress and could make out the blonde hair from my peripheral vision. She made no sound. My whole family is Hispanic, with no light-haired people in our circles at the time, and there's no way our parents had anyone over in that tiny house without everyone in there knowing. About 2003, I was by then nine. We were getting to, ready to move into a bigger house, which better suited the needs of our family. 
I was looking forward to literally geographically getting away from that house. The ghosts, the dread of nightfall, seemed like a nice prospect. Until my first day alone in the house. My parents were very trusting of us kids and left us at home during breaks between school. We were watching TV. Then my stepbrother and sister and I started hearing a clapping sound. It was coming from one of the back rooms. Scared, we went to look there, but there was nobody there. Clapping? Yes, one person clapped loudly as if to congratulate the performance. But there was nobody back there, and it was my stepsister's room it was coming from. The door was closed. No, we didn't open it until our parents came home. It should also be noted that my stepdad's brother moved into the small house shortly after we moved into the new house, and no paranormal activity has been reported there since. Happenings still happened regularly at the new house, however. Sightings through doorways, full conversations in empty rooms, electronics turning on and off on their own, typical ghost stuff. And as we grew up, we just kind of learned to shrug it off. It became a thing for any one of us to suddenly declare that they've just seen something, because honestly, it happened that often. Side note, we had a dog war at this new house named Nemo, who shortly passed away under unknown circumstances. He just died out of nowhere. We buried him in the backyard and put a cross there, but removed it shortly after, after the new dog started peeing on it. Okay, back to the story. The night we got that second dog, Charlie, I put him in his little kennel, which is situated at the foot of my bed, latched the door shut and climbed into bed. Shortly after, I heard Charlie's collar jingling as I assumed he was awake and he started to whimper. Not thinking, I patted on the bed next to me like I used to for Nemo. And shortly after, I heard claws rough scratch the carpet. You know, like when a dog kicks off the ground when it jumps and then the bed slouches where he landed. I felt small paw prints circle around and a little body plop down on the bed by my feet. It was then that my heart started to flurry as I remembered I had closed and locked Charlie's kennel. There wasn't supposed to be a dog on my bed. I hopped out of bed and turned on the lights and lo and behold, Charlie is still in his kennel and there's nothing on my bed. I didn't sleep that night. Needless to say, that little guy and I became best friends after I'd hold on to him on nights I was really scared. Not that anyone's asking. But as of writing, he's 16 and still running around. Old for a miniature schnauzer. Probably not related to the ghost stuff, but it's abnormal enough for a dog of this type, so I thought it was worth pointing out. Around this time, circa 2009, something new had started to occur. I call it the glaring, because that's what it felt like. It didn't feel like I was being watched. It felt like I was being stared at heavily. Picture walking into a busy room and everyone stops what they're doing and they just glare at you. No talking, no break in eye contact, glaring. Now imagine that room is always the darkest and coldest one, despite having the largest windows. It felt thick. The glaring happened in several rooms. Sporadically but it almost always presided over the front living room, which is why our family had taken to the back den space more warmly instead. I've grown up and have since moved out and as far as I know, they still don't use that front room much. It was also at this time that I started feeling the bottoms of my shirts getting pulled on, as if a child was trying to get my attention. I also remember an instance where the glass sconce over the hallway light was thrown across the hall. I had just walked past it to go to the bathroom and was closing the door when I heard a humongous crash. I opened the door and saw pieces of glass spinning across the floor. My mom asked, what was that? And I just told her to come look. That sconce was attached to the wall in such a way that it had to have been lifted out of the metal setting, which was screwed to the wall, and then pushed out from the wall in order to become loose enough to even come close to maybe falling down. Or else it would just fall back into its metal setting. I know I hadn't closed the door yet, so it couldn't have been vibrations from the closing door. We still don't have answers, and I've returned to that sconce fixture time and time again, 
trying to figure out how it came off its rest. The bulb is still bare to this day. I never replaced it. Ugh. Now, I mentioned before that we had been seeing figures leaning into doorways or rooms peeking at us. But one time particularly jarred me. It was a night when my step-siblings were with their other family and my parents had stepped across the street to pick at a neighbor's yard sale. So I was alone. I was studying on my bed without my glasses on. I'm nearsighted. And I started detecting one of those figures from my peripherals. It gets real quiet around me, like the air got sucked out of the room or something. I look up and with my fuzzy vision, I see that familiar shape pull its head back and hide on the other side of my door to the hallway. Oh, hey ghosty, I say, and I return to studying. Then it comes back again, and this time when I look up, it doesn't pull back away immediately. It hesitates for just a second, and before it quickly vanishes behind the door, I saw its face. No details because I wasn't wearing my glasses, except for the most prominent feature. Great big eyes. I freaked the fuck out and called my parents to come home because of the ghosts and they came home right away. At the time, I must have been 15. Almost every night this entire time, I'd awaken in the night to look out into the hallway and would see that man just standing there in the dark. Other times, I could hear footsteps in the dark entering the hallway at the kitchen and heading up to the doorway of my bedroom and then stop and start walking in place. Pat, 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 pat. Shoes tapping the tile floor just behind the slightly cracked door. I could see the shadow figure out there going up and down with every step, always looking directly in my direction, as if they knew I was watching them too. God freaks me out just remembering it. I remember thinking how illogical it was. Seeing things that weren't there must make me crazy, right? I moved away from there when I was 19 and moved in with my partner, whom I would later marry. We've been in several apartments and have rented homes. Every single place we go, there are those figures. There are the voices. There are the things going missing. My partner and I once found small child-sized handprints on the sliding glass door of our third story apartment. We have no kids and no kids visit us and we definitely cleaned it since we'd moved in. We've also seen a man sitting on our bed tying his boots from the corner of our eye on several occasions. When I was 25, I think, I reconnected with my, with my biological father, and he told me stories he remembered from when I was small. It was just him, my partner, and me having some breakfast at Denny's or IHOP or something. It had been since I was three or four years old since I had seen him. He was telling me about times I would wake up at night, and he'd pull out some crackers and cheese for me to eat as a midnight snack without my mom knowing. I digress. He continued into some weird things that happened when I was little. He said that on several nights, he would come into my room to check on me sleeping, and he'd hear me talking as he approached. As he got closer, he said he almost thought he heard a voice say something back to me. That's when he charged into the room and asked who I was talking to. He said that I didn't know, and he, out loud, told whatever was there to leave me alone and to leave us in peace. I guess it did, until he was out of the picture, and the new stepdad took his place. That story sent shivers up my spine, not because I remember it, because I don't, but in the back of my mind I always knew there had always been something watching me. Ever since the corona lockdowns have been a thing, and now that we're spending more time at home, we're noticing less and less activity going on. While it's been an extremely unsettling journey with these entities, none of us have ever felt at risk of harm and so have never sought help to rid ourselves on them. It's just now surprising, that's all. It's been so many years. We still hear talking and movements in other rooms. The sounds of fabric, like someone's clothes as they moved about the room, can be heard midday. It's all just nuts. When I was young, I got married to a guy that I would call Jack for the story's stake. Jack's mom is involved in the story, and I'll call her Mary. Jack and I got married young, and divorce ensued a few years later. He had developed some issues that I was not equipped to deal with, including constantly threatening suicide if I didn't give in to his demands. The marriage was emotionally taxing and toxic. 
That being said, we loved each other very much. When I left her for the first time, he did as expected and prescribed emotional blackmail. Jack said, as I'm sure has been said to others, I will not live without you. In a weird way, I believed him, but I was not sure how it would all play out. Besides, that wouldn't happen to me. Not really. Fast forward to 10 years post-divorce to this man. I hear he goes downhill. It's heartbreaking. I'm devastated. I tried to reach out. For all the issues, there was a tremendous amount of love. However, I had to move on. 10 years later, I'm remarried, have kids, and a happy little suburban family. On my seven year wedding anniversary to my then current husband, he divorced me. Yes, this death was a factor. I got the phone call that would change my entire world. Jack had chosen my anniversary to slit his own throat. I could hardly process it, so I fell apart. So we had just moved cross country and I drove red eyed back to my hometown to see Jack's mom, Mary, on Christmas day. See his room, his home, his things. Say goodbye to him and maybe try and get some closure. Mary had let very few people in to do what I was doing, so I was very honoured and grateful. I got the courage to ask for a memento, as I had nothing left to remember him by. I knew that I needed something. She let me stay in his room for a while, talk to him and look around. I wasn't sure what I was going to take, but I knew when I saw it that it would speak to me. Jack among other things, was very OCD, literal diagnosis, and his clothing was kept impeccable. It appeared he had just done laundry and there was a stack of precision folded clothing on a chair. I decided I might like a hoodie, preferably one I could remember him wearing. I knew the things on the chair were probably new items, but I looked through them anyway. Mary talked with me the whole time, looking at each item with me. As I suspected, I found nothing on the chair. Then I looked through his closet and trunk, thinking I might find older items. Nothing. Mary and I continued, I was just happy to be there and say goodbye. See his things, his life. I told Mary thank you. I told Jack that I loved him for probably the 12,000th time. I was thinking of leaving. I, of course, had been crying and turned one last time to look at his room. I could smell him, I could hear him, and I just needed one last look. I knew I would never be in there again. When I turned around, on top of the stack on the chair was a hoodie I had bought for him when we were kids. I'd know it anywhere. He wore it constantly. He loved it. I know for certain, and Mary was with me. That hoodie was not on that chair, and I had not seen it in any of his clothing. I felt this gush of love and warmth, and I knew without a doubt that Jack was there in that room, and I'd gotten a Christmas gift. I still have a hard time wrapping my mind around it, even all these years later.